Welcome to A Guide to Every Deck in EDH. Today we're looking at Zakama Primal Calamity. So Zakama is the other big dinosaur commander alongside Gishath. And this is a nine mana Naya commander. It's a nine nine with Vigilance, Breach, and Trample. And it says, when it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, that's important, if you cast it, untap all lands you control. And then it has three different abilities in red, green, and white, which all cost three mana. Deal three damage to target creature, target creature. Destroy target artifact or enchantment, or gain three life. So there's a bunch of different things going on with this card. So what are some of them? It's very expensive. It untaps lands when it enters, but only if you cast it. And it has activated abilities that do not require you to tap it or sack anything. So they are outlets for infinite mana, although none of them straight out win the game. So what we're gonna wanna do is play a bunch of ramp really fast so we can get Zakama online as fast as possible. We also want that ramp to take the form of putting lands into play, not just mana dorks or mana rocks as usual, because we want the untap all lands ability to get us the maximum amount of mana for Zakama. And although these abilities do not technically win the game because none of them like deal damage to our opponents and infinite life doesn't win the game, they are very strong. Being able to kill every single creature our opponents control and blow up all of their mana rocks and other artifacts and enchantments doesn't actually win the game, but it is really good. So we're gonna want, again, ways of ramping and then infinite combos that can combine with Zakama. So let's start with card draw. We've got the usual Esper Sentinel, but then we have other card draw in these colors that we can get off of the fact that Zakama is huge. So cards that care about the power or toughness of Zakama. Garrick Primal Hunter, his second ability, minus three draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. Last March of the Ents, eight mana uncounterable, Draw cards equal to the greatest toughness among creatures you control, then put any number of creature cards from your hand onto the battlefield. Life's Legacy, as an additional cost, sack a creature. It is unfortunate that we have to sack Zakama to that, but draw cards equal to the sack creature's power. So if we can produce enough to maybe cast Zakama again, we can just draw a bunch off Zakama and then recast it, which shouldn't be too much of a problem since we are untapping all of our lands. Recycle, Return of the Wild Speaker, also draws off of non-humans based on the power level. Rishkar's Expertise, same deal. And Soul's Majesty, same deal. So we're gonna have a lot of spells that draw really high amounts of cards when we have Zakam in play or just anything else that's really big. I'll skip combos for now. We've got Pyro and Red Blast as our counter spells. We have more lands than usual, 34 lands, because we do want a lot of lands. We basically wanna be making a land drop every single turn and we wanna be uh, ramping lands into play. So pretty typical Naya mana base. Dryad Arbor for GSD target, Guy's Cradle. Sarah Sanctum, because we do play some enchantments, so why not have a land that could produce more mana? Sanctum of Eternity is two mana return target commander you own from the battlefield to your hand. We'll get back to that when we go through the combos. I technically should include this in the combos as well. So lands like Guy's Cradle are gonna be important because if we can produce more mana with our lands than it takes to cast the comma, so let's say, we have, you know, let's say our lands produce a total of 10 mana or more, right? Because we've got, you know, Gaia's Cradle or Sarah Sanctum or whatever, or Temple of the False God producing more than one mana. That means when Zakama enters the battlefield, it's going to untap these lands. And that means we will have produced more mana than it took to cast Zakama and are also untapping. So if we've got any ability that allows us to blink or bounce and recast Zakama, we can go infinite. We've got Protection. So we want Cavern to make Zakama uncounterable. We want Allosaurus Rider to make it uncounterable. Silence, Veil of Summer, Deflecting Swat. Then we want an absolute ton of ramp. Now we can't actually get away from playing other forms of ramp because the creature-based mono dorks and the mono rocks are just too good not to play, but we can play land ramp alongside that. So of course we've got our typical ramp, Arborolf, Absence Pilgrim Birds, Delighted Halfling, uh, Monocrypt, Soul Ring, etc. But we've also got land and, and land aura based ramp. So Utopia Sprawl, Wild Growth and Fertile Ground are all going to enchant lands and make them produce more than one mana. And then we've got Farseek, Nature's Lore and Three Visits to tutor up lands directly onto the battlefield. Then we've got Elish Norn because Elish Norn doubles the Zakama trigger while also shutting down our opponent's ETBs. We could also play, and then we've also got Panharmonicon for the same thing, right? Doubles Zakama's triggers. We also have Gandalf the White, 
You may cast legendary spells and artifact spells as though they had flashed. If a legendary permanent or an artifact entering the battle, entering or leaving the battlefield causes the triggered ability of a permanent to trigger, you control the trigger. That ability triggers an additional time. So like Norn and Panharmonicon, it doubles the Zakama trigger. We've got a bunch of tutors. So a bunch of creature tutors because some of our tutor, some of our combos involve creatures. And we also have land-based tutors in crop rotation expedition map. And then Elvish Reclaimer and Knight of the Reliquary are also tutors because we want to be able to get Gaia's Cradle, we want to be able to get Sarah Sanctum, we want to be able to get Cavern of Souls, etc., etc. And then we've got all of these. So these are more uh, ramp spells, Trace of Abundance, Overgrowth, as more mana ramp for Zakama. We've got Up the Beanstalk because it triggers based on casting Zakama, but it also triggers on... We're going to have combo loops that involve recasting Zakama over and over, so this will draw our whole deck doing that. Mana Reflection also doubles the mana production. So this is again, another combo piece with Zakama. Zendikar Resurgent, same deal. And like Up the Beanstalk, it triggers off of casting creatures. And then we've got Hour of Promise and Sky Shroud Claim. These are more ramp spells, although I don't necessarily count them as ramp because they cost so much. So by the time you can actually get them out, they're not really ramping you anymore. They're more like land tutors or just like more expensive ramp, but they do technically count as ramp. And then Imposing Grandeur, each player may discard their hand and draw cards equal to the greatest mana value of a commander they own on the battlefield or in the command zone. So although this does allow your opponents to also discard and draw, it means it's five mana to discard and draw nine cards since the comma is nine mana. So this is a pretty big card draw spell. All right, so as I said before, one way that we're gonna be able to combo is we need to either blink or, not, or actually not blink because we have to cast a comma. So we need to be able to cast a comma and then bounce it back to our hand and then cast it again. And we need our lands to produce more mana than it costs to cast a comma plus to pay for whatever it is that we're using to bounce a comma back to our hand. So if we have some combination of lands that either produce more than one mana on, on at least one of the lands, or we have let's say auras like fertile ground overgrowth etc that make the land produce more than one mana and then we have a way to constantly bounce as a comma over and over we can make infinite mana and then in all likelihood win the game so what are our combo pieces so of course as said before we've got gandalf norn and panharmonicon which are going to make it so that the Zakama trigger is doubled. So right there, that makes more mana than it costs to recast Zakama because we can float the mana in between the triggers. We've got Cloudstone Curio, which is useful for potentially bouncing things. We also have loops with Dockside. So Cloudstone is also relevant. Again, if our, if our lands are producing 10 plus mana, then it means we can cast Zakama, then we can cast a creature, bounce Zakama to our hand, then cast Zakama again. As long as our lands are producing more mana than it costs to both cast as a comma plus whatever other creature we're bouncing with. And we can just have like a random mana dork or Esper Sentinel or something. So as long as our lands are producing 11 mana total, it means that with a Cloudstone Curio and a one mana creature, we get infinite mana. If we have Meticulous Excavation or Teamer Sabertooth, we can bounce things back to our hand. So Teamer Sabertooth, we need our lands to be producing 12 mana so that we can play as a comma for nine and activate Sabertooth for two. One more if we're using Meticulous Excavation to bounce a permanent back. Like the Gandalf, Elishnorn, and Panharmonicon, we also have Mana Reflection and Mirari's Wake, which also double our mana production from lands, which basically does the same thing. Same thing with Zendikar Resurgent, although it will also trigger off of casting Zakama. And then we have also Staff of Domination, which once we have infinite mana can draw our whole deck. We also have Sanctum of Eternity. This is two mana tap return target commander you own from the battlefield to your hand. Activate only during your turn. So of course we can use this to bounce our Zakama back to our hand and recast it. In that case, we need to be producing a grand total of 12 mana plus have a Sanctum of Eternity in play. So nine mana for Zakama, two mana to activate this to bounce Zakama back to our hand. Plus this itself isn't tapping for mana because we're activating it to do the bounce ability. So we have all kinds of various combinations of that. Then we've got Horned Kavu. This is ETB, return a red or green creature you control to its owner's hand. This card combos with any uh, trigger doubler because we can then use or trigger doubler or Cloudstone Curio or Teamer or Meticulous Excavation because we can use it to bounce the comma to our hand. And then if we've got a trigger doubler, we can not Gandalf though, because it's not going to count for Gandalf, but Norn and Panharmonicon, 
we can bounce both Zukama and itself, or we can use Tamer Sabretooth or Meticulous Excavation to bounce. Although if we have one of those, we could just bounce Zukama anyway. There, there's other cards that do the same thing, like White Mane Lion. The reason I prefer this one is because you can get it off Green Sun Zenith, and you don't really need more than one of them. As long as you just have a creature that can bounce Zakama when it comes in, then you have a creature that you can tutor for that does that. And thus, of course, a lot of our combos involve creatures or artifacts and enchantments or land. Thus, we want all sorts of various tutors for artifacts, enchantments, lands, and creatures, which of course leads us to have all of these tutors that go find creatures or which go find lands or which go find artifacts and enchantments. But the main deal is gonna be Zakama comboed with all of these various combo cards to make infinite mana. Now, infinite mana doesn't actually win the game, again, but killing all opposing creatures and all opposing artifacts and enchantments and making us immune to damage-based kills off the third ability is pretty good. And then we can draw our deck either with one of these cards, let's say, that just draws a ton of cards and hopefully finds us another card, especially Recycle. Recycle alone is a way to draw cards when we just can keep bouncing Zakama over and over. Or we combine it with anything that can draw more cards like Staff of Domination, etc. And that is the basic breakdown of Zakama. Now, another thing to note is even outside of these combos, as long as you can just ramp a whole bunch, Zakama is just pretty good, right? Like, we just ramp, even if we have none of that going on, no extra card draw. If we just ramp a whole ton and then just play as a comma, untap nine lands, and then we have the ability to destroy slash kill up to three artifact enchantment and or creatures, that's still pretty good. Like kill the best stacks creatures or whatever else is a problem or artifacts and enchantments. Now the one big thing missing from this deck is stacks cards, right? We're not playing any stacks cards in this version, so... There's no Aven Mind Sensors, there's no Rest in Pieces, there's no Rule of Law Effects. Although Rule of Law Effects would interfere with our own combos, but there are stacks cards that we could be playing that we just aren't. But I feel like since we're already playing a bunch of combos anyway, they're not necessary. Although if your metagame is one where you would particularly like stacks cards, like if your opponents are typically storming out to win, or if your opponents are, you know, just doing any other sort of win conditions that are potentially an issue, you could play those stacks cards. Also, Zakama himself does have a built-in way to deal with your own stacks cards. So let's say you play an Archon of Emeria or a Rule of Law or, you know, some kind of stacks card that is preventing you from winning. Zakama can just blow it up. Zakama can deal with any artifact or enchantment, including your own. If you have a creature that has three toughness or less, you can bolt it with Zakama to get rid of it. Also, Meticulous Excavation can bounce one of your own permanents, so you can use that to get them off the field. Cloudstone Curio, like let's say you have a Rule of Law in play, you play the Rule of, let's say, yeah, like you go Cloudstone Curio and Rule of Law, and then you can just play like any enchantment to bounce the Rule of Law back to your hand, and then you can go off. So even if you were to play Stacks cards in this deck, you would have plenty of ways of dealing with them. I personally opted not to put Stacks cards in the deck, as I felt the other things it was doing was powerful enough anyway, outside of obviously Norn shutting down ETB triggers. But that's more of just a personal choice. It's not necessarily right or wrong. And if you yourself wanted to put stacks cards in the deck, you easily could. But anyways, that is the breakdown of Zakama Primal Calamity.